<laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Gosek Szelek and I am uh, EM in Managed Workspace Groups and I'm joined here today by Valerie. Hey everyone, my name is Valerie Burton. I'm a software engineer in tests uh, for Managed Workspace. Yeah, and we want to talk today about uh, what we call big bugs squashing initiative uh, that we, uh, which we are doing here in, in Managed Workspace. And our idea was to go through the backlog of our bugs and, and make it really clean and organized. And uh, we had like a kind of special, like special method of it that was like, it's like, don't require anything, uh, it's required that much effort and it's not something very official. It's just our way of doing this, but we found it really effective. Uh, in the last month, so since we started doing it, uh, we closed uh, and closing is be between you know, team working on bug fixing and Valerie and myself working on like verifying and closing old bugs that are not longer relevant. We closed 18 of them, which is which we, f we would think uh, it's quite an impressive number. Other one, you want to add something? Yeah, I found it to be really helpful too, just the way um, that you went through Gosha and just categorized all the bugs in like different um, buckets or like themes. Um, so I know for me as a tester and also being like a newer member of the team um, going through and kind of um, conceptualizing like where we might have different pain points or where we can maybe even improve like from a QA perspective, our testing strategy, like seeing various gaps in like these uh, feature areas uh, I thought was really helpful. Helped me learn too, just about different features I wasn't aware of yet um, as well. So I thought it was a really, uh, really good exercise for for that that purpose too. Yeah. So Valerie, you mentioned how how we actually did it. So our approach was uh, quite simple. Uh, so I started it by just going through every back in our backlog and reading the description. And by with the description, I categorized every back into around like a subject, like what kind of area it touches. So for example, in our uh, in our group, it was, uh, we had a bucket of bugs around memberships. We have a bucket of bugs around project creation. We have a bigger bucket of bugs around group sharing. And so first of all, I just use a Google doc and I just put a lot of subject and a link to a doc. And then whenever I was checking new bug, I would just categorize again. Uh, either starting new bucket or theme, or just adding it to the existing one. Once we've done it, we could easily, uh, at least it was kind of easy for me, we could easily uh, spend very small amount of uh, time per week, like I don't know, Friday afternoons or um, Tuesday mornings, just to go for like one bucket or half a bucket and just verify if those bugs are still there. Sometimes they are really old and it's not relevant anymore, but that all, of course that needs checking. So that requires a little bit of time, but by doing it uh, piece by piece, by doing it little small in small parts and, uh, uh, and uh, inside those buckets, it was easy to avoid context switching and really understand better that part, part of the app. Yeah, yeah so, exactly. And Valerie, you asked me if uh, like EM needs to do it. That was our conversation last time. Yeah, I was just kind of curious. Um, I know you have, you have a lot of experience in the code base and um, familiarity with these features. Um, yeah, I was just like kind of curious what advice maybe you'd have for someone who is newer or uh, maybe it's like really intimidated by such a large backlog of kind of where to start with categorizing, like what um, what kind of helped you or like what's some advice that you might give and yeah, who else? I mean, it was pretty much a team effort on our group too. Like who can, who would be good to like do this? So, yeah. I think, I think that, I think, Anyone who has like more experience in the group can do it or help with it. In some groups that may be a PM because they, if they're here for a long time, they probably know so well how, how every part of product should, should work. If 
the group is, you know, if the EM or PM are also new, uh, we usually have someone more experienced in the team. So I don't like probably someone who's like the most experienced in the group can be this person who who does the uh, this like bucket categorizing. And even though we had fair fair number of bugs, it was not small. It it. It was not very um, it was not very time consuming because how I approached it, I just read the description and just categorized very quickly. I knew it won't be perfect, but I decided that like speed and uh, speed is more important and I like, just getting it done. And I accepted that some bugs probably are not categorized perfectly, but this will this will definitely come up in the um in the verification stage and then we can you know regroup them uh regroup them but usually they are pretty it's pretty obvious which part of the code the the bug you know is uh uh is connected to gotcha yeah that makes sense yeah so i think it's it just it's important to find a, a find person who can we really do it quickly? So probably someone the most senior in the group or the most familiar with the with the product, right? And how how do you see it from the uh, from the quality perspective? Was it yeah. helpful? How, how did you find it? Because we like I already came to you with the categorized box. Yeah, like I know for me, um, yeah, it was definitely helpful uh, again to just see those various. Um, categories and see kind of like where we have gaps. And so like in my mind, as I was going through, um, I kind of started to categorize even a bit further by like the types of bugs that were more prevalent. So like it might be like lack of friendly error messages or maybe some like various kind of smaller UX sort of issues that might get easily passed up when we're writing like test automation. Sometimes we, um, you know, developers and um, even testers too, sometimes we tend to think of like, the happy path when uh, creating a new feature. So um, just kind of seeing like where those um, maybe like gaps or uh, other areas that, you know, it, it's like a good refresher to, to keep in your mind. Like, so when new features come up, um, you can like kind of pull that out from the back of your mind and be like, oh, okay, let's um, take a look at this. Let's make sure to keep the user experience in mind. Um, different edge cases that are really helpful to pick up when kind of going through these things. Um, so I think it's just really helpful. Um, uh, yeah, a, an exercise to to help get better at just being a, um, a tester, uh, like with quad planning too. So I think doing something like this can really help strengthen that. Yeah, and I think it's you know also helpful for our PMs because uh, they do not need to wonder if this bug is still relevant if they want to you know, schedule it for the next milestone or milestone after that, because they can be sure that it was already verified quite recently. So for me and thinking about, you know, my cooperation with PM, uh, it's, I'm waiting for the day when I can say our backlog is, you know, very clean. There's no like old issues that we just don't know if it's still a bug or it's, it was already fixed two years ago. We know because we actually verified all of them. Yeah, it makes sense. Do you um, foresee this being um, kind of like a regular um, exercise that groups would have to do every so often? Or what are some ways that um, might be like some good things to keep in mind to maybe, uh, it, this is probably like a million dollar question to not get a, a very large uh, growing backlog yeah. um, in, in the first place? <sighs> Well, I think, you know, if uh, we keep an, you know, I think you as well, but definitely uh, Christina's PM and me as uh, EM, we are assigned a triage issue every week. So, and I always try to, you know, look at the, those problems that are, you know, assigned to our group and make sure that they are relevant and, you uh, you know, assign them to backlog and or we if we have like an epic that you know gathers things around the same subject i can do that as well i can assign this issue to this particular epic but i think it's uh it helped like i think it's it's good exercise to do uh to do regularly 
But I think it's, you know, once you do it once and twice and third time, I think it gets easier. The same like with triaging, if you if you have a lot of people of things uh, that are not that are not in the backlog, not, they were not looked at, your triaging issue is very, very big. And then if you if you are regular with cleaning it, triaging issue, you know, it's like two new issues that just came up this week. And I think here is the same thing. If you know, I think if group, if any group will, can do it like once and then twice, the next one will be very easy because we already know about these bugs, we already verify them. So it will be like very quick only about the nuance. Uh, so I think it's a good start of keeping the backlog clean and in order. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, again, I know with our new uh, cross-functional prioritization processes, like with bug prioritization, um, we have a lot more visibility now into seeing, um, like using our various SciSense dashboards, uh, seeing all the different bugs by age and severity, um, and priority. Um, and so that will definitely show like the older bugs that we can kind of surface and, and clean through like during um, that process as well. I think it's a... Uh... Also, like it doesn't need, in my opinion, doesn't need to happen like in you know on one month. It can be like a spread out effort, uh, and by that it's not that overwhelming. You no, know, it doesn't matter if this is you know you have a huge backlog of I don't know two hundred bucks. If you think about it, okay, I will just do it. I don't know for half a day today and then for half a day uh, next week and you know two weeks after that. At some point, you get you know all the bugs in the buckets, or you will go for all the buckets. It's just the matter of, you know, like being persistent with this effort uh, and just be patient with it. Yeah. Yeah. Very good advice. So just kind of being consistent and a um, little bit at a time, you eventually like work your way through it. And get plus, I, plus I think, you know, with the buckets, it's like also easier to actually divide it between, you know, team members because, you know, you can say like, okay, so we have three team members and we have like four buckets. So, uh, you know, one person will get the smallest, two smallest buckets and the other will got, you know, the bigger ones. And also I think, you know, if we see that, you know, one area is having a lot of issues, that also tells us something. It tells us this area is very problematic or either it, uh, it needs more iter iterating on it or uh, maybe it's not, understood well by the clients and then we can react then we can cooperate with our designers or pms to make sure that we will address it maybe on a like bigger scale not only by bug fixing but also by you know just improving the product uh, as a whole yeah i know if, um in this iteration that we did uh we had it all in a google doc um i wonder if there's uh, somewhere else that could be helpful to um, for it to live where we can kind of see these um, uh, categories like over time um, and kind of track that and, and see uh, like, like you said, like what areas are most problematic, um, which ones are getting the most bugs um, and just also just this kind of like documentation too, of like here's um, kind of these subcategories of the features that we're responsible for. Um, I wonder if that could, there could be a good place for that. I think we can, you know, like organize in like epics because like, you know, we have like one epic that's called big bug scoring initiative or whatever the name you pick sure. and then organize it, like call the buckets just as sub epics and then issues are just added to epic. I've picked Google doc just, you know, because it was, it was my first attempt and I was just, you know, you know, when I started it, I didn't know if it's going to work. It was just my first attempt and I was like, eager to see the results or lack of results. And then it's easier to abandon than organizing the issues in the epics because then if it's not helpful, then probably I would need to, you know, like uh, disconnect them from the epic. So I, I went with Google Doc just to exercise bias for action and not overcomplicated. Uh, overcomplicated, I tend to, you know, do that most boring solution at the beginning and then assess the results uh, and think about, you know, the second iteration. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, yeah, that definitely sounds like a good strategy. Um, and yeah, I, I can see epics being helpful, like as we kind of do this more and more. 
Um, yeah. yeah, but I think it's, you know, I don't think the most important thing is the what kind of tool or is it going to be Google Doc or, you know, Excel spreadsheet or uh, issues or epics. I think the most important thing is actually uh, having this goal in mind to clean out the backlog out of the bugs that are not longer relevant and, you know, making uh, your team actually trust the backlog. The backlog are the issues that we need to work on because they are relevant. Okay. Uh, do you want to, and if they have anything to add? Oh, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, I think that's a, uh, yeah, thanks so much, Gosha, for kind of walking through this. Um, hopefully this will, uh, you know, be helpful for other teams to to adopt and see if that's helpful for them too. Um, well, yeah. I hope so. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and looking forward to um, continually uh, learning and um, and just kind of helping out where I can and, and have this uh, help inform our test strategy too, because that's uh, kind of another uh, side to it that's I think it's really, really good for. It. Yeah, I also think that, you know, uh, if we cooperate uh, more, it's just beneficial for everyone. For sure. Okay. Thanks, Valerie, so much for joining me. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thank you.